Okay, welcome to part one of this series. Um, in this video I'm very briefly going to go over the directory structure that we're using and then I'm going to get on with talking about RSS feeds. So this is the folder that we saw a moment ago in the browser. This news.php is the page that we had open. And we have this core folder. This contains like the entire sort of back-end working of the site. So this init.inc.php file uh, just contains sort of stuff that uh, well, initial initialization sort of thing. Um, so it does anything that you want to do on every page load. So it starts the session if we're using sessions. Um, in this case, it just includes a single file, and you'll see that in a moment. Uh, that file is in this ink folder, and it's just called bbcnewsreader.inc.php. And what this file does is, oh well, what it will do when we're fi once we're finished making it, it will provide a single function which gets the sort of raw information from the uh, RSS feed and sort of converts it into a format, formatted array that's a little bit easier to work with. And then we're going to be using that array on our news page to sh show the list of articles. So going to our code, um, this is the news.php file, so this is the page basically. Um, as you can see, all it does is include this init file, and then down here is where we're going to be working for the most of, well, the probably third or fourth part of this video series. Um, and then we have this init file which is obviously being included so if we just go to that you can see that all it does is work out the full path to the folder that it's in and then it uses that to include the backend file and this backend file uh, oh, ignore that is currently um, blank now anyway um, except for this comment which just shows uh, is a reminder sort of to me really th um, of the feed URL so we don't have to go to the site to get it um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, create a function to fetch the news. So we're going to be using that on this page here, and we're going to be defining it here. So let's just define a new function, or redefine if you saw that a minute ago. Function fetch news. It's not going to take any parameters or arguments if you want to call them that. Um, all, it's going to, all it's going to do is download the entire news list of news from the RSS feed. Um, so uh, let's just go back to our um, news page and obviously because we are going to be using this function here uh, it needs to be called so we're just going to add fetch news so it's going to call this function before we sort of do anything with it so that we can just sort of reload the page and test it um, so going back to going back to our back end file this is where we're going to define our function so the first thing this function needs to do obviously is download the contents of the RSS feed um, so we're going to do that using the file get contents function um, which you can use to download the contents from a URL as well. Um, so the URL we want to get the contents of is this one here. Whoops, there we go. I can remove that comment now because we don't need it. Although this isn't actually doing anything, we need to store this. So we're going to create a new variable called data and just put it equal to the file get contents function call thingy. And what this will do is download the entire XML document sort of into memory. Um, it's quite a big document, but you shouldn't really see any problems just from doing this. So let's go. Um, no, that should be date. It should be data, not date. So let's just output the entire document, and then we can have a bit of a look at it. So if we just do echo data, uh, and then go back to our browser and hit reload. Ignore that. That's from earlier. Oh dear, prepared. Right. So you can see that we get this horrible mess of sort of what looks like basically nothing. But this is actually the RSS feed. Uh, it's mostly made up of like new lines. It has its own sort of tags as well, so they're not shown by the browser because they're not valid HTML tags. But if we just view the page source, you'll see what has actually been output here. Bring this up here. So sort of starting here and going all the way down quite a lot is the RSS feed. So you can see that um, we have these items here, and each item corresponds to a news article. So you have the title which is something about MPs, the description, which is just a description, um, and then a link to it, so this is the link that you can click on to go to sort of view it on the page, I think. Um, and then you have the publication day, which is, where, which is when that article was published, um, which we won't actually be using in this tutorial. But um, And then we have this sort of thing here, which is um, a namespaced tag, I guess. I'm not really sure what the ter correct terminology for that is, but... Uh, so what this is, is... Um, well, it's the thumbnail essentially. So, um, with each article, there is like a small image, which just sort of makes it look a bit nicer, I guess. Um, they tend to have photos and stuff. 
Um, so we're going to be showing you how to get this as well because by default when you load a new uh, XML string or object um, you can't access those straight away, you have to do something. I'll be sort of explaining that a little bit as well. So, um, oh yeah, the other thing is that all the all the information that's not inside these item tags just corresponds to the actual feed itself. So you see you have like a copyright string which is just saying who owns the feed I guess, the information, the language, the description, uh, it just tells you that you know it's a description of the feed, not of a specific article. Um, and then the title is the same as the title of the page, which is a bit strange. I if that... no. I'll just ch check and see if that actually changed the title of my browser window. It didn't. Um, so, uh, to pr process this, we're going to be using the simple XML object, or string, or class, not string, not string, the first and third one. Um, and we do that, um, we need to load this XML, and what that will do is sort of process it all into an object, which we can use, uh, w which we can sort of work with to get this, the, well, the various bits of information that we need. So, if we just go back to um, our um, code, and what we'll do is load a new simple XML element or object from the string. Uh, so, we're going to redefine the data variable. We equal data equals simple XML load string. And this will just, like I said, it will load a new simple XML object from a string. And the string should be the RSS data. So we're just going to pass in the data variable again, because that contains the um, full RSS feed, as you just saw. So then if we change the echo data to print underscore r data, like so, and reload our browser window, you'll see that we get a slightly different output if it ever loads. There we go. Uh, obviously, again, this is in a sort of a complete mess so what we can do now is because we're not showing any tags we can just go to our news page whoops our news page news.php and before the php block we can add pre tags and we, after it we can close the pre tag and what this will do is just format the output of that function as sort of plain text to so preserve the white space so going back to our browser now and hitting reload again for like the fourth time uh, it does take a while. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can see that we get like um, a sort of formatted output of the feed, um, and this is actually the um, information in the XML simple XML element. It's not object, sorry. It's not like the actual feed, like I showed you a moment ago. So you can see that we have these various sort of elements. Uh, the first one, well, the channel one, uh, contains uh, the entire feed basically, and you saw that a moment ago. Uh, so this bit at the top is the bit at the top that I mentioned, so here's the same copyright string and here is the description and the title whoops, titles are there and then we also have this uh, item which is an, uh, an array and, e and that contains an array of elements of each item, if that makes sense so that's what we're actually going to be working with because each one of these elements in this item array um, con uh, corresponds to a news article and you may have noticed that the thumbnail isn't in this list. It just stops after pub date. If we just look at the feed source, you can see that after pub date, we have these two uh, media tags. Um, and the way to access those is a little bit complicated, and I will explain it as best I can anyway, um, in the, uh, well, in this part, hopefully. So going back to our, um, here, <laughs> our feed view thing, um, what we're going to do is process these item elements to get the relevant information. So we'll start with the simple stuff and then we'll sort of move on to the more complicated things. So if we go back to our backend file here, um, what we need to do is loop over each item and put the information from it into an array. Um, we obviously need to also need to define that array, so let's just create a new array here. We'll call it articles. It's an array of news articles and it's going to be equal to an array like so. And then we need to use a for each loop because we're looping over an array. Um, the item element was actually an array itself. Uh, you saw that here because it said item points to array, so it's an array. For these ones where it says like number points to simple XML element object are objects and they should be accessed 
or used as objects, not as arrays. But it's fairly obvious that, I guess. So anyway, going back to our code, we need to loop over um, data channel item. Whoops. Because, because that is sort of the path to the array through the document. So going back to our um, browser just once more, uh, we started here. So this is like the data object, and then we go to the channel uh, property, and then the item property, and that itself is then an array. So to sort of process that, get back to our code, we do for each the path to the item or the um, array, sorry, as item. So for each of the items as item. So inside this for each loop the item variable will be defined as um, each of the item elements in turn. So we can just use this to add to the articles array. So we can do articles two square brackets to indicate that we're adding something to the end of the array equals array itself. Let's bring that down to make it a bit clearer and we're going to be getting some ver sort of various information from this. So we're going to be getting the title we're going to be getting the description, spelt right, the link, which is just the URL that they're going to be clicking on, I guess, and the date, which we're not actually going to use, so it's a bit pointless. So just tab this across, and the title is the uh, just the title element. So just once more, going back to our browser, you can see that inside each of these, you have a title property, which just sort of point, uh, sorry, yeah, a title property that just points to a string. So we can just use that as we would any other property of a class. So going back to our code, we can just do item title, and that will get the title. And the same goes for the description and the link and the publication date. So this should be that item description. Put, tab that across, item link. I think it was link, and that should be item. Oops, pub date like that. So if we just under here, if we now add a print underscore r of articles, and I have just spotted that typo, which be the articles array, not article. And if we just reload our page now. You'll see we get something that's quite slightly wrong um, if it ever loads. So you can see that we have sort of got it, except each of the elements in our array uh, that we just defined uh, actually points to a simple XML object. Um, so you would have then have to get the property of that. Um, and the way around this is to cast the object to a string. So if you just go back to our code, <coughs> excuse me, go back to our code, sorry, um, here what we can do is because this is actually an object for some reason when you read it um, you can just do string to cast it to a string except you can spell string properly like so if we reload our page again whoops, you'll see that the first one title now points to a string if it ever loads there we go so title now points to a string not to an object so we can do that for all of them and that will sort of fix that little problem so let's go back to our code and apply the cast to all of them. What this actually does is converts when you do type casting, which is what this is, when you do a thing in brackets like this that goes green in my editor before a variable or something, it converts that variable or something to the type that you specify. So what we're doing here is converting an object to a string. So just one more reload and you'll see that now we have four strings. There we go. So this is uh, getting sort of a bit more usable now. We could just use this to loop over and output the information without sort of having to worry about properties and all that complicated stuff. Um, so in the next part, uh, I'm going to show you how to get the thumbnail information, um, which is a little bit complicated, to be honest. Um, it could be made simpler, but never mind. So thank you for watching, and hopefully, so far, this is being fairly useful.